the number as a person there. It's really, really nice to be back. Um, as you guys know, Courtney and I have been gone this past week. We were up in Yellowstone Bible Camp, and we're in Wyoming Bible Camp before that. And yes, we do not have COVID still. So that's the review from all the kids at Wyoming Bible Camp. We were not one of them. Um, but it is so nice to be back here home, finally. Um, it was, you know, yesterday you get done with your vacation. That's the most crazy day, right? So you got to drive all the way back. And we stopped and saw Jeremy Becker and Cody. And then we had to get our dog. And then we get back and a lady needed a motel room. So I had to make sure. So yesterday was crazy, right? And then I get up here, and this is not in the notes, but I get up here and it's like, ah, we've made it. We've made it home to be with family. So I hope you guys feel that way every Sunday we get together. I sure do. feels good to be back home with family. I hope last week um, here in the congregation, what Larry gave you about what happens after death was encouraging and thought-provoking, and maybe it got you thinking, or what Dennis talked to you about in Bible class, hopefully, uh, again, thought-provoking and encouraged you to do your own studying and think about words and how they are in our scripture. Um, we had a good time, and we're, we're very, very happy to be back. Um, so two weeks ago, I think I told you we were done with 1 Corinthians, and I'm standing by that, okay? So I, I said, I don't know what we're going to go to next. That was kind of true. I had this idea in my mind, and I don't call it an actual idea until I write it down, but I had this idea in my mind of where we'd be going in Scripture. And the funny thing is, we'll actually be going to 1 Corinthians a little bit today, but we're going to move on from 1 Corinthians and go into a new section. And I don't want to call it a series because I told Courtney a series that I wanted to do, and she said, no, they don't want to hear about that. Because my whole series idea was, you know, when, when you're in the stage of life that we are, you start learning some principles. And I think all of us learn principles. And the stage in life we are in right now is we just bought a house, right? And so all the things that are on my mind about what we're doing in life are all just that. And there's principles that come from that. But Courtney told me, no, 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 they don't want a series about buying a house. They're all, they already know about that. So welcome to our unnamed series that's definitely not about buying a house and the principles I've been learning along that process. Today, we're just randomly, for some reason, talking about the principle of preparation. Don't know why it's in my mind. Don't know why um, preparation is, is so important to me right now. But let's just say we bought a house for some reason, okay? And it's funny because preparation sermon got less preparation than normal, so there's no PowerPoint. We got to go old school, and you guys got to follow along and write notes if you need the scriptures, okay? But there's no PowerPoint for you this week. But I want to talk about preparation. And so when we bought our house, preparation was pretty important. We finally got to the point where we could sign all the paperwork and close on the house, but that's not where it started. There was a lot of preparation for us before then. I wrote down a bunch of things that we, we prepared on, and let me make sure I don't miss some of them here. But for us buying a house, that preparation was frustrating at times. It took a lot of doing to do some of the preparation. I mean, at first, it was just a simple little phone call. Some guy just called me and said, hey, I hear you want to buy a house. How much do you make? I'm like, well, we make this much. He's like, cool, you can buy that much house. I'm like, no, I can't, right? So I'm like, okay, well, we'll be looking for like half of that. He's like, okay, no big deal. That was easy preparation. But as we started to get closer, the preparation got a little harder and harder. There was one point after sending in my tax information and, and my financial information multiple times, I was like, seriously, you need it again? More preparation? You need more signatures and more paperwork and on and on? And the preparation was kind of getting tiresome. It was kind of getting tiresome. But then there was little bursts of hope in the middle. We'd finally get a fully approved so we could go look at houses, and we'd start looking at houses, and we'd start prepping for that. And finally, we got to buy one. But the preparation didn't end there either. We're still not moved in there. Miss Sherry knows that there's been some serious preparation happening physically in the house, right? She came and helped us paint a bunch. That's why I'm giving her credit. But we've been prepping the house now so we can live in it. And there's preparation there. And before all of this, 
a big chunk of preparation for us was, well, we got to have some money to buy a house. So we prepared ourselves by how we did it is we paid off all our debt and saved up money so that we could have a down payment so we could prepare to buy a house. Preparation when buying a house is really important. For some reason, they don't just let you walk up with no money and say, that one's mine. A lot of preparation. And so I find it kind of ironic or funny that right about the time we closed on our house and we started working on it, the Olympics are going on. And I don't really care about the Olympics that much. I I guess I'm not cool enough to be following all the countries and how they're doing. But I don't remember where we were. Courtney and I were having lunch or something. And the Olympics are on the TV. And so I get a little glimpse of the Olympics. And they're doing Olympic rock climbing. I didn't even know Olympic rock climbing was a thing. No idea. And so in my mind, I'm like, oh, Olympic rock climbing. These guys are going to be really good and really diligent at what they do. Because, you know, I think rock climbing, all day affair. You climb a rock face. You take the whole day. You don't want to fall off, so you're careful, right? And then they cut to the actual athletes performing. And in about 30 seconds flat, I saw somebody climb a wall multiple stories tall. And it wasn't reckless. It was really diligent. Each foot and handhold was put in its right place, but they ran up the side of a wall. I didn't even know that was possible. I thought rock climbing was a slow process, but when you have prepared for so long, you become an Olympic athlete and you can run up a rock wall. I had no idea. So I thought it was pretty funny when I started thinking about preparation that the Olympics are are taking place and I see athletes who are incredible. And I thought, man, that had to take some serious preparation. Or like in Bible class, when Dennis gave the example of the uh, world-renowned pianist who gave one of the greatest shows in his life and somebody said, man, I would have given my life to play like that. The pianist said, I did give my life talking about preparation, preparation. So we can see that preparation happens in our world. It's a good thing. It's a thing that we need so we can accomplish goals. So thank goodness it only happens in life. Thank goodness Christians in our spiritual life have no preparation. Yeah, I'm being facetious, right? Preparation is important in our spiritual lives. It's important for us as Christians, and it's important for God the Father as well. So when it comes to us and our spiritual lives in this room, preparation is all about being a disciple or a follower of Jesus Christ. Um, The apostles taught how we can be a follower of Jesus, and we're going to prepare for our salvation with that. But Jesus himself says something interesting about preparation. John chapter 5, verse 24, I invite you to open your Bibles here because I'm going to be in John for a couple of verses. In John, Jesus is talking quite a bit. We have a lot of red letter for New American Standard people, right? A lot of red letter for Jesus, a lot of him speaking. And John 5, verse 24 is the first verse I'm going to read. Jesus himself says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but he has passed from death to life. That's what I had Larry read at the beginning of our time this morning. What's it talking about? Well, Jesus himself is talking about Christians. He's talking about salvation. Whoever hears his word and believes in him has eternal life. Jesus is talking about heaven, about eternity, and how you can get it. So Jesus is talking about eternal life, but in John, he also gives us an idea of preparation. Flip forward a few chapters into John 14. John chapter 14, let me go ahead and read it out of my ESV here. And we'll read the first three verses of John 14. Again, Jesus speaking, and he says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many rooms. If it were not so, would I had told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. 
So in John, Jesus is talking about salvation. He's talking about how to be a follower of Christ and what that equals to us. It equals eternity. It equals heaven is how we'd say it, right? And he says that in both of these uh, scriptures that I read. But he also starts to talk about preparation. Jesus says, in my Father's house, there are many rooms. So much space for everyone in heaven. Would I not told you so if I wasn't preparing a place for you? I'm preparing a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, he basically says, I will come and get you, believer, and I will take you with me to eternity so we can be together forever. Prepare is in there a couple of times. Jesus is preparing heaven for us, disciples of Christ. Jesus is preparing and eagerly awaiting to be with us for eternity. So when it comes to uh, preparation in a spiritual sense, Jesus is doing it. Some pretty awesome preparations happening on that side of things. He's eagerly awaiting to have us in heaven with him. He's building the rooms if you want to have that image in your mind. And yet, we don't have anything to do with that preparation. That's all on Jesus. He's preparing for us for eternity. And he tells us that we can be saved and spend eternity with him. That right there is a good sermon. Could have just ended that right there. But for those of us in Bible class in uh, Second Peter, it goes beyond that a little bit too. We know we're saved and we're assured of our salvation, but we should be having some preparation as well. We should be preparing because a place is being prepared for us. So Jesus is preparing to have eternity. Maybe us as Christians should be preparing to have eternity with him too. You ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about how we are here on this earth? We should be preparing to spend it with Jesus in eternity. It's an opportunity. Our lives are an opportunity to get ready and prepare ourselves to be with Jesus in heaven. So we can see it as that. It's encouraging, but it's also kind of challenging. And that's what I said in Bible class too. This is so encouraging, but it's also challenging. And Paul described it, this challenging idea really well in 1 Corinthians. And we actually read this a few weeks back. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, verses 24 through 27, if you want to flip there. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. I'm in the ESV. Paul says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run so that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wealth, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly, and I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control. I'm going to stop right there in the the middle of verse 27. Paul is talking about preparation. Talked about it a few weeks ago uh, in the idea of running a race. This was a good example to those Greeks who invented the Olympics, isn't it? But what he's talking about is a preparation for the race, and we will run it strong. We understand that life's like running a race. That one was not a hard analogy for Paul to give to us. And we can do a successful job at running to win when we exercise self-control. When we run with a purpose and when we get to the finish line, we already know the gift is waiting. We already know the trophy sitting right there with our name on it. Our gift is imperishable. It's not prize money. It's not a physical trophy. It's not bragging rights. But instead... It's what Jesus has been preparing for us. Eternity in heaven with him. So Paul's saying, you know you're going to win the race. Run like you're going to win the race. Run like an athlete who's trying their very, very hardest. That's what we've been promised. That's how we can prepare for eternity. We run the race. I don't want you to be confused. The, uh, the promise has been given to us. Mark 16, 16 says, whoever believes and is baptized is promised eternal life with Jesus. That's what Mark 16, 16 says. So the trophy is there for us. We have the promise. But don't you want to run strongly to the end of the line? See, that's what preparation is. 
Preparation is running strongly till the end of the race and grabbing that trophy because you've been running hard. Like I said, 2 Peter chapter 1, where we were at this morning, Peter's talking about how we've been given salvation and how we've been given grace. But when we forget to prepare, when we forget to discipline ourselves, we become blind to the fact that we've even had that, that salvation. We forget that at the end of the race, there's a trophy, so let's run hard to achieve it. And Paul would teach uh, the same thing like he did in 1 Corinthians to the church in Rome as well. Let's go ahead and flip over to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, the first five verses of this chapter. Romans 8, verse 1 through 5, Paul says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There's a trophy. Verse 2, For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin he condemned sin in the flesh order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, in us who walk, not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. Paul starts these five verses, chapter 8 in Romans. He starts with saying, you know that you're in Christ Jesus. You know of your salvation. But by the time we get towards the last few verses that I read there, he has some challenges for us, right? He's saying, but you should be preparing. He uses the word walk, right? We might walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And we live not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So we set our minds on things according to the Spirit. See, what Paul is talking about here is, while we're on this earth, how do we prepare for heaven? Do we have the opportunity to just sit down and do nothing for the rest of our lives? I'd like to see you try. It's pretty hard to sit and do nothing. You're walking one direction or another, usually. But Paul's saying, Peter's saying, don't just sit down after you've been saved. Why don't you start preparing for heaven? Why don't you start preparing to look like Christ so when you get there, he says, yeah, that's my little brother. Yeah, looks like Christ, right? Prepare to be with Jesus for eternity. How do we do that? Well, Sandy said it this morning. What does preparing to, look, to be in eternity mean? Well, it's walking in the light. It's not standing at the edge of darkness, wondering if we should move, but instead it's actively walking in the light. We're challenged to become more like Christ and to sacrifice our own flesh, our own desires, to be more like God who lives in us. That's what Paul is saying here in Romans. So a little principle from some random thing going on in my life, preparation. The athletes for the Olympics... Man, they need a lot of preparation because I still cannot comprehend how you can run up a rock wall. When we bought a house, just a little thing in life, man, it required a lot of preparation. And yet sometimes I feel like we think after salvation, we don't need to do any more preparation. Sometimes we forget that we're not there yet. We've been promised the trophy at the end of the race, but we still got to run the race. So what's Paul say? Well, he says, run it as if to win. We already know we won, but let's run it as if to win. That's preparation for eternity. That's preparation to spend with Jesus. So not just this week, not just this month, but until I see you at the finish line, keep on preparing. Keep on preparing to stand there with Jesus. Thanks for your little bit of time.